Welcome back Turners. Today's project is going to be um, turning a pen. I'm going to use this uh, trim line kit from uh, Penn State Industries. Uh, it's like a slim line but it's, uh, it's got a thicker center band which makes it a, it's got a nicer uh, heft to it. So uh, I'm going to select some wood from the stash that I've got up here and we'll, uh, we'll make ourselves a pen. And then at the end I'm going to do a little bit of laser engraving. Here over the station from my small lathe uh, I've got some pen turning stuff down here, but I've got uh, this section up here, which is my pen turning stock. This is a lot of stuff that I've broken down into various pen blank sizes. And so I'm going to take a look in this box and see what fun stuff we have in here. Okay, as a habit, I generally try to mark stuff. This is a piece of uh, Honduran rosewood. Um, it's not burl, just the rosewood. This is actually a very pretty grain. I like that. I've got some um, olive in here. Um, this is some hormigo negro from South America. Uh, I've got some walnut. This is burl. This might be nice. But I think I see what I want down here at the bottom. And uh, this is uh, thick enough. This is some zebra wood uh, or zebra or zebrano. Um, I think I'm going to use this. Okay, I'm here at the little bandsaw, because what I need to do is I need to cut this into two pieces for each of the tubes of the pen kit. Um, what I need to first do is determine if the blank is long enough for the kit. And I generally do that by laying the tubes down and seeing if there's enough room for a bandsaw kerf in here. And there is. There's actually plenty of room in here. So I usually just do this. I mark the center like that. Okay. So now I've got a center mark. And what I'm going to do is take my miter gauge. And we're going to make a cut on this so that we can then take it to the lathe for drilling. Now the good thing about this kit, you'll see these actually ended up coming out the same length, and that's because the tubes are the same length. So the tubes now, I've got enough on each end to actually trim off the edges. Uh, what I'm going to do first though is we're going to drill these at the lathe, glue the tubes in, and then we'll trim them. Okay, the great thing about the, um, the green lathe and the little black lathe in the back is they have the same headstock spindle size, so they're one by eight. All of my chucks are interchangeable with both of them. And uh, so I want to do some drilling. I'm going to take these uh, pen jaws. Uh, this chuck is a PSI chuck. I believe it's their mini chuck, uh, C-series. And all these jaws are for the C-series. So the Barracuda, the Economy chucks, they're all interchangeable. So that means all of my chucks fill uh, all of my uh, jaws. Um, and uh, I need a drill chuck, so we'll grab the drill chuck and we'll get to drilling. This kit wants a 7mm drill bit for those tubes. Um, I have a set of pen makers drill bits that I picked up from uh, Woodcraft. And all I've done is I've actually just drilled out a block with each one to make for easy storage. And then I've uh, identified which is which. For instance, that's a letter O drill. This is a 3 8 uh, SAE. This is um, the metric sizes, 7, 9, 10. So this works out really easy for me to be able to quickly see and identify which drill I need. So I know I need the number 7. And I will uh, now just chuck this up. Okay, the nice part about this chuck uh, and these jaws is that it basically self-centers this. So all I got to do now is uh, advance the drill. Okay, and this drill, this is already going to be centered on the blank. So. Uh, as I, it doesn't, it doesn't even need to be squared because it, 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 it'll, um, it'll find center for me. All I have to do now is drill it, so let's do that. So 
So you can see this tube is fairly smooth. One of the things I like to do is make sure I take a piece of like 150 of the sanding strip. This will really give it a good sanding, rough it up. Um, I believe this really helps with the gluing into the tube. Gives it uh, a little bit of purchase. Um, it doesn't, doesn't take much. You can see it's uh, just a couple of twists with the sandpaper and that's, I don't know if you can hear that, it's nice and rough now. So I do it with both of them. Some of the kits from PSI come uh, with them already kind of roughed up. This one in particular didn't. So it just takes a moment to do this. And then uh, we can move right straight on to the insertion of the tubes. Now, here's my fancy tube insertion tool. It's just a piece of scrap. But this is what I think is kind of key to this process, is using Q-tips. So I keep Q-tips here in the work, uh, work area. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, um, I'm going to take some, I'm using this uh, stick fast medium, which is what I like to use to glue the tube in. And I'm just going to spread some around, just like that. I'm going to take the Q-tip, as a, and I'm just going to run that all the way back and forth through there. Okay. And then I'm going to take the tube, okay. I'm going to lay a bead along the top, like this. But not quite to the end. Okay, and that's it, just on that side. I'm going to give this a twisting motion. I don't know if you can see this, but I get a nice puddle of CA all the way around. And the more I twist it as I push it in, I'm getting good CA coverage all the way in. Okay, and um, so now I have room to trim that off on both sides. So I, I like where that is. I'm going to just stand that there and do the next one the same way. I'm going to put some CA in here. Just go around a little bit, like that. Take this again, just run it in. So this makes um, sure that there's good coverage of CA all throughout that hole. So it comes all the way out. Again, we take this, run a little bead along the top, not quite all the way. Okay. Insert it with the twisting motion. So you make sure that there's a good puddle of CA all the way around as you're going in. I believe that helps drag that CA in. And then just push that in a little bit because we're going to have to um, uh, straighten out the ends of these things anyway. So we're going to let those dry for a moment. Now for the barrel trimming operation. I like to uh, do this by hand. I keep a glove nearby because I'm going to grab these with my hand. Some folks prefer to do it um, in vices or whatnot on the drill press. Uh, I do mine by hand. Um, so what I need to do is uh, Basically hold this securely with the glove. This is going to protect my hand in case it spins, but I have yet to have one spin. Now this cordless drill has a barrel trimmer in it. Um, this is the 7 millimeter. I guess we'll call it a mandrel. And these are the cutting edges. And basically what you do is you insert this into the tube, and uh, this is supposed to clean it out uh, if there's a CA in there. I hardly ever get any CA in the tube, though. And so this... Uh, um, this will go in here spinning and it will actually cut then the end of the wood. Oops, got to be in the right direction though. And um, what you want to see is the shiny bit of brass um, to let you know that you can stop trimming because if you trim too far then your, your barrel will be too short. So. Okay, there it is. See a little glint of the brass there? That one's done. Okay. Now we do both sides. Okay, that one's done. There wasn't much on that end. Okay, and we're going to do this on this side as well. Okay, done. I'm going to. Uh, now find the bushings for this trim line kit. I've got this little box where I keep all the bushings. They're all marked. Um, I picked this little thing up also at Harbor Freight. I think it was a few bucks. And it's got all these nice little boxes inside. Um, and uh, you can see I can, I can keep them all clearly labeled so I know which is which. So I'm going to find the right one and then we're going to go to the lathe. There they are, my trim line twist set. So. So before I mount this up on the lathe, just want to show you that I had this mark on here from earlier, 
Uh, I forgot to show you guys. Before I cut the pen blank in half, I mark it so I remember which direction the grain is running. Because when you put the pen back together, it's always aesthetically pleasing if the, you can get the grain to run continuously. Okay? But I don't mark this end until after I've done my barrel trimming. And the reason is, obviously, because if the barrel trimmer takes the material away, it'll remove that line. So now that I know where this is, I come in and I do a little discrete mark. Okay. You could call it the maker's mark, I guess. Um, and I put it right here. So I remember where this is um, this line is. Because now as we turn the pen, these lines are going to disappear, and then I won't know where the alignment marks are anymore. So these are alignment marks. When I go to reassemble the pen at the end, those will help me make sure that I have the right uh, grain continuity. Okay, so um, the bushings uh, are going to go on this mandrel. I'm going to turn this on a mandrel today. And there are three for this one, because we're going to put, put the whole thing on here at once and turn it all at once. There is a center band, and this is the thick, the thick one. That'll be the one in the center. There is the one for the clip end of the pen. And I don't know if you can see this, it's just ever so slightly thicker on that end than it is on the ink side, okay? So uh, that's where the ballpoint ink will stick through and we're done. So um, we want to make sure we get those in the right order. I like to always orient my pen so that the clip end is on this side and then the bottom is over here. So, and uh, again, keeping those... Um, in the right orientation, remember your mark. Okay, um, I'm going to. I guess I'll put this here. Oops. Okay, center band, and then the other piece. Okay. I probably could have a little bit more mandrel out of there, but I use a mandrel saver. Okay, that's uh, something from PSI. It actually goes over the mandrel instead of using those little knurled nuts. And then you tighten that up, okay, make sure your tail stock is adequately tight, and then you tighten that up just to give it a little bit of friction, pressure, on the bushings, which will hold these pretty snug. Now that one's not that snug. Let's snug that up a little bit more. Okay, good. Now, okay, that spins nice. I will set up my tool rest. There we go. Okay. Now I like to use the um, roughing gouge for this and I'm going to go turn on the dust collector and be right back. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn this now. Um, I'm going to use my face shield and this little uh, protective shield uh, that's actually on this dust collection hood. This is also a PSI product. I love it because it has great airflow um, and does a good job of picking up the chips.
600 grit and that's where I'm going to stop with the sanding. It has a really nice feel to it and um, now we're going to do some engraving on the upper part of the barrel. Alright guys, we um, have a couple uh, new tools to show here in the shop. Um, one is just a little laptop that I use uh, to run this little uh, laser printer uh, or laser engraver, however you want to look at it. Um, this is a, a Chinese product called Niji and uh, they make a series of these different uh, lasers in various uh, uh, power ratings. This one happens to be the 1 watt laser, so very low power, but it's enough to do some pen engraving. Um, you can find these online for about uh, anywhere from I think like uh, 70 to $90. Um, I uh, got this a while back. There was a, if you guys want to read up more about these, you can go out to the uh, International Association of Pen Turners website. Um, in the search just put in Chinese laser engraver and there will be threads about this machine and how to how to find it and order it so uh, anyway so what I'm gonna do now here's the uh, upper barrel from the pen that we're gonna I'm gonna engrave for a coworker I'm gonna put uh, some stuff on here you can see there's um let me see if I can focus this in a little more specifically so this this little white dot you see here in the laser bed is the focusing dot um, this little platen at the bottom moves around and what I've done is I've just secured um, a little piece of uh, paneling at the um, onto the platen using these rubber bands and then I've made a little uh, v-notch tray that is glued to that so um, this will help I'm gonna secure the pen barrel in here um, under these rubber bands that are on the um, uh, V-notch tray. And then we'll go ahead and start the burning process. Now this software that comes with, there's a little software package that comes with this device. Um, it's, uh, I don't know if you can use anything else, but it came with it and it works and what you would need to do is basically just drag and drop an image into here. And what I've done is um, I've pre-made some stuff in Microsoft Paint. Uh, really all you need to do um, and uh, when you have set up an image um, an image file and you save it I'm gonna take that image and I'm gonna drop it on there and then you can see um, how it centers up this is a 500 by 500 pixel um, palette if you will and so it's really it's about two inches by two inches square which is just perfect for engraving pens so um, we're gonna go ahead and send this to the uh, laser engraver in a moment and after I get this all uh, mounted up okay one of the features of the software let me come back over here real quick there's a little uh, button over here that says um, carving preview what I did was I hit the send to image button and it loaded it into the memory on the engraver. Now I'm going to use a carving preview and watch what happens when I do that. It's going to basically trace out where it plans to engrave that on the pen barrel. And I will just take a look to see if it's centered where I want it to. And if it's not, I'm going to move the platen up. Okay, now I've made a very minor adjustment um, to see, as a matter of fact, I think I've over adjusted, uh, to see where it's going to center on. That's supposed to be the center right there. Okay, so I'm going to do the test again. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'll go back to the middle now. I think I'll move it just a hair more. Again, all I'm doing is sliding it under these rubber bands a little bit, okay? So, now back over here on the software, um, there is a burn time. Now, I've been using 70 um, 
uh, and it gives me a pretty good effect. I'm going to move this up just a little tiny bit. So I'm going to burn, set the burn time up to 75. Should be good. And one of the things um, over here, again, what I'm going to do is I've got this ducting from my um, DC. I like to get that right up there. This laser is going to produce some smoke when it starts burning the image. And I don't want the smoke to disturb the laser burn quality. Um, also, the airflow helps keep things a little cooler, which hopefully will preserve the life of this uh, e economical little unit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the DC on, and we'll get to burning. Take a look at the finished engraving here. And the zebra wood. Oh, that came out pretty good. You can, let's see if we can get that on the camera. Okay. So that um, zebra wood is a little harder. I probably could have gone with a little bit longer burn time, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse it and put my coworker's name on this side, um, so that the pen clip will be able to run right down through the middle of here. So the name will go over here. All I have to do now is reverse it in here and load the name over here on the computer and print again. So I'm going to do that and then we'll move on to finishing. Okay, here we are at the small lathe. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a CA finish on this. That's um, basically cyanoacrylate. It's uh, something I pick up at PSI. I'm also going to be using their um, Penmakers uh, Instaset. So this is um, an accelerator for the CA glue and I'm going to use that as a finish on here. So I'm going to use the thin to start and um, I'm going to use these little blue shop towels I've cut up into little pieces uh, to apply this on here. I'm also going to use for the first couple coats I'm going to use a little boil linseed oil on the pad. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. So what I do is I start out with a little bit of this uh, boil linseed oil and just put a uh, little spot on here. Now this paper has been folded up to um, four, four ply so it's uh, four times its normal thickness so I just dab it out a little bit by squeezing it together like that. Go ahead and turn on the lathe here and set it to uh, about this seems like a reasonable speed. Okay. And we'll go ahead and start the application. I just uh, for this, I drizzle it onto the center like that and spread it around and I do the same on this side. Okay. And again, this is the thin. The BLO kind of helps keep the uh, CA from sticking to the paper. Okay, so get that started. Some folks are sensitive to this uh, CA glue. I'm going to give it a couple spritzes of uh, the accelerator now. There we go. So if you are sensitive, make sure you use some kind of a respirator or at least a little ventilation. I uh, have a fan in the background and it blows the air across and so I don't have to smell um, the CA fumes. So next coat, okay, a little more BLO. Okay, I'm turn that speed up just a hair. I like to use these blue gloves from uh, Harbor Freight as well because they help prevent 
me sticking to the CA that's on this paper. So, okay, give that a little spritz. Okay, another coat. A little more BLO on the cloth. A little more CA. Okay, so that's three coats of thin. And I'm going to move to medium. You don't have to be right on top of the pen when you spray the accelerator either. Um, it works better if you're a little distance away from it. So that's starting to build up. Let's take a look at that. All right, now moving on to the medium. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot on here, like that. I'm going to carefully just roll it across. Like that. I'm going to do it on this side also. It's about a pea-sized drop. Okay. like that. Make sure you got a good coat. Now we're going to hit that with the accelerator. Okay. I'm going to give it one more coat. Try to keep it smooth. Accelerator. Piece of paper towel. Mm -hmm. okay. You should do it. Okay, so this is um, set up now, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some wet sanding. I've got some micro mesh, and I've got this little sanding pad that I like. I'm not sure. I got picked it up at Woodcraft. It's uh, some kind of a sanding pad, and I like to start out with this because it's rougher, uh, slightly rougher than the micro mesh. What I do is um, uh, start out. At a slow speed like this, make sure your sandpaper is good and wet. And then you just start sanding. Like this. Want to be light with it. And then, you know, wipe it off with a blue towel. I've got a piece of Lexan sitting on my lathe bed. That's just to keep water off of it so it doesn't get all nasty with rust and whatnot. And once you get, once you get so far, stop. It's going to dull out as you sand on it. Okay. Um, you're looking to remove any bumps or ridges, but you just want to do that until you have a fairly uniform surface, and then you can move, start moving up through the grids. I'm going to speed up just a little bit. Again, you want to be light. You don't want to sand through it. Some of that off of there so I can see what's going on. I'm starting to get smooth. I still got some bumps over here. So I've got to work on that some more. And so this is how it works. You keep on this, just being gentle until you get to where it's uh, fairly smooth and then you start moving up to the other grits. So I just completed the wet sanding. 
um, uh, micro mesh uh, all the way up through the uh, 1200 grit. So I'm done with that now. And uh, one of the things I like to do is use this uh, Plastex. It's from Meguiar's. Pick this up at your local auto supply store. Um, I use this as fine a, a kind of a finish coat. So um, again, just using your blue shop towel. I like to uh, uh, do this by hand first. Uh, just it doesn't take much. Just a little bead on the end of the towel there, and. Um, Again, just kind of rub that on just to give it a little bit of a coat. Okay, get it on both of them. Okay, kind of rub that around. Make sure your lathe is on low when you start this out. And then just kind of wipe it in. Okay. And then pick up the speed a little bit, the dry section of the towel. Do a little bit of buffing. Okay, don't want to stay in one spot too long. Okay. And that is an awesome finish. I don't know if you can see the shine on that. I wonder if I can reposition my light any. Uh, there we go. Maybe that's a. Let me move the camera. Okay, see that shine on there? So, um, has a beautiful smooth finish on there. All we have to do is take it off of here and uh, mount it on the kit. Okay, now this is a little something I made up. Uh, it's just a little block of wood with some small dowels in it, but it holds my finished pen components. And here's the two pieces we just completed that are going to be mounted now to our kit. Now what I'm going to do, I have this um, little pony, also this is a little pen press I made. So it's just a pony clamp and that's been embedded in a little frame. And so what that allows me to do is take my component pieces and I'm going to do, for instance, the cap end first. So here's our little clip component. okay, And here is our uh, the uh, I guess you would call it a finial. It's the little piece that goes in the very end. We can get that out of there. Come on, guys. All right. Okay. So PSI does a nice job of packing these things in all these little bags. Okay. What you want to do? Uh, every kit will be different. So if you're going to do a kit of your own, make sure you're following the instructions for your kit. I've pretty got. I got these memorized for this kit. This little guy goes in here like so. Then we need to have the uh, upper end of the barrel. Okay, that's the lower end of the barrel. So that's the nib section. We want this part up here. Like I said, um, I have a name on this. I want the name to appear on one side of the clip and the organization name on the other side. So what I do now, is I can position this pipe clamp and get everything set up in here and get it ready to press. Yeah, it's a little more fidgety than if I had bought a commercial press, but when I started, um, I didn't have access to one, and so I made this and I've just never converted. So now I can tighten that up, check the position of everything, and then start the tightening process. What I want to do is make sure as this goes in, oh my that I'm getting this clip centered perfectly between the name and the organization name. Because I can disassemble this once it's together, but I'd rather not do that. Okay. So this then is the upper part of the barrel. There's the name side, and there's the organization name. I'm not sure if you can see that. Okay. So now for the lower side, this one's the, a little bit more tricky. I need a little bit more room in the vise. So we'll open that up a little bit. Um, what we're going to do is push in this nib piece part first. Okay. And that's going to go into the thinner end. I kind of twist it in to start just to get it a little bit of purchase. And then uh, I'll put it in the vise and finish it. Okay.
And then we're really going to open the vise up because then I got to put in what we call this section or transmission. I'm sorry, this transmission. I've got uh, fountain pens on the brain right now. All right. Okay. So that's in. That part, that was the easy part. Okay. So that's, that's ready to go. Now we'll open this wide open because we have to get this little transmission in here. And this is the part that the uh, ink screws into. Okay. And um, what you want to do is test it. So you put it in just so far. And what I do is I install the ink and see if it extends when it's supposed to be. So that doesn't quite make it. I don't know if you could see that. Okay. So that means I need to press that transmission in a little further. I found I, I need to do this test because every transmission is slightly different. This one looks like I, there's a little ring on here, a little press point. It looks like I can probably insert it that far. So I'm going to go that far next. Okay. And now we'll check it again. Okay. That looks better. And let's do the retraction. Okay. And it retracts fully. And I would say that wants a, just a little bit more. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm going to call it good. Okay. I think that's it right there. Perfect. Retracts properly. Okay. So let's do that again so you can see that there it is. And there it goes in. Okay. Now all we need is the center band. So here it is. Okay. You pop that on over the transmission. You remember those marks I said? Um, I can just barely make out the mark. It's right up here on the top of this barrel. Okay. So I'm going to remember that as I put this ring on. I'm going to look for the mark on this side. I believe it's right there. If I did this right, these are going to line up just like that. Okay. That's in the closed position. All the grain is nicely aligned. And when I twist it, and it's a twist pen, the point extends, and when I bring it back. So that, that, that pen's done. So uh, now all I have to do is put it in a little pouch and a box, and uh, then the gift is ready. It's finally, uh, here's a little felt pouch that I, uh, I get these, I believe, from uh, Woodcraft. And uh, I'm just going to now put the pen in this little pouch, like so. Okay. And um, that is how it's going to go to its uh, recipient in a little box. So, um, thanks for watching this video. I hope uh, hope you found it entertaining. Um, I like the zebra wood, and uh, I like the little laser engraver from Niji. So um, it uh, certainly lets me add a little something extra to the pens. And um, if you uh, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe, comment and like. And remember to check out my channel um, and all the other great woodworkers and wood turners that I have subscriptions to out there. So thanks again. We'll see you for the next one.